This week on The Splash, water balloons and WB, investing in relationships. And later, music for the community. The Splash is a production of Civic Center TV. We're a news magazine that covers everything from local news to feature stories. Also, that we can bring you the latest from the greater West Bloomfield area. And now, let's dive into The Splash. Welcome to The Splash. I'm Brooke Allen. And as always, thank you for joining us. West Bloomfield Police Department challenged the kids in the community to a water balloon battle. However, Mother Nature had other plans. Reporter Jay Kustash gets the scoop. Cops versus children. It's the fight everyone wants to see. Except when there's a lightning storm, which I'm currently waiting out inside my car right now. I'm at the Drake Sports Park in West Bloomfield, and I'm here for the big water balloon battle. We're going to have a great time. Right, guys? We're going to have a great time. Yeah! <laughs> It was the West Bloomfield Police Department versus children and a legendary water balloon battle. The rules were simple. You get water balloons, you throw water balloons, and you try not to get hit by water balloons. This event brought the community together for some summer fun. And despite the rainstorm, the war moved forward. That was until... After the lightning delay took place, the battle continued, but not for long. Because eventually, the storm proved to be the true champion. The water balloon fight may have been cancelled but I'm a hard-hitting news reporter, so I'm not gonna let it stop me from getting the scoop. We now transition over to the history of the water balloon and the battles that have been fought with it. As we all know, the water balloon was invented by Edgar Ellington in 1950, and as this famous story goes, he was attempting to make a waterproof sock as a solution to trench foot when things went awry, and thus, the water balloon was born. Since then, countless battles have been fought, and of course, the largest fight of all time, which included over 8,000 people, and was held by the Christian Student Fellowship at the University of Kentucky back on August 27th of 2011. And we can't forget two water balloon legends, Bippin Larkin and Ashrita Furman, who hold the records for farthest distance to throw and catch a water balloon, as well as most hits of a person with water balloons in one minute. We salute these legends. The water balloon has been and will continue to be a source of safe summer fun for everyone for many years to come. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Jay Kustash. You can find more information on our website at civiccentertv.com slash WB Water Balloons. Relationships in business are a crucial factor toward reaching success. Reporter Ryan Younglove stopped by the Business Innovation Generator meeting to learn how you can improve your networking. Networking is a crucial part of any business, and here at the Business Innovation Generator meeting, we discuss on how to improve on those skills. I was asked by the West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce to uh, do a talk on networking, so I spent some time telling them, explaining to them how attitude, behavior, and technique uh, helps build a successful networking and prospecting plan. Most people don't like to prospect because they feel you know, emotionally invested in it and they don't like to be rejected. And, and one of the things I want to do is help them recognize that prospecting is about getting out there, selling what you do, having, helping people get better at what, you, what they do, earning some money, and not about getting your emotional needs met. And I was helping them to understand how to do that. I think one of the things that they seemed to be struck with was the, the quote I asked them to write down, be nurturingly curious in their quest for the truth. You know, I want them to be comfortable to ask the questions that they need to ask to help the client discover whether working with them is the right thing to do. So either yes or no to get that truth. After a very informative presentation, it left everybody who attended with a better knowledge of networking, which they can bring back to their business for continued success. This has been Ryan Younglove, reporting for The Splash. For more, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash investment relationships. Later in the show, we get to hear about a special concert happening at the library. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV.
now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Brooke Allen. The West Bloomfield Public Library hosts its Music at Main concert series, treating the community to some smooth tunes. Reporter Lawrence Nyland has the story. West Bloomfield residents were treated to an afternoon of outstanding music at the public library. The concert was the latest in a series called Music at Main, and the featured band was a jazz quartet which found its way to West Bloomfield with the help of Ken Napo from the Friends of the Library. We bring in acts from all over uh, the country and beyond, uh, a number of Canadian acts. Today's is jazz, uh, we have uh, some Broadway, it's uh, much more diverse. It uh, makes West Bloomfield kind of a center for uh, culture. We're very proud of that. I'll be home late tonight. Black. Veteran Detroit jazz artist Stefan Kukuruga led the eclectic quartet, and he was ecstatic to expose the band's talents to his current hometown of West Bloomfield. I just love sharing music in general, and, and showing uh, people are seeing that we're creating in the moment, which is a lot of what I think jazz is, personally. Uh, so. I'm excited that they're game to have this sort of thing going on here. Of course, I'm excited because they do all kinds of stuff here at the West Bloomfield Library. So I'm thrilled they bring all these various acts and they try to keep it diverse. Stefan's bandmates on this afternoon were Dwight Adams on trumpet. Dwight plays for Stevie Wonder's band. He plays with James Carter all over the world and all kinds of other ensembles all over the world. Ralph Armstrong on bass. Ralph is traveling all over the world also in all different kinds of mostly jazz uh, shows, but he's played many commercial shows with Aretha Franklin or Oak Clue and all kinds of stuff. And Skeeto Valdez on drums. Skeeto play has, is famous, especially in this part of the country, and, and internationally too. Uh, one of the favorite drummers here in Detroit, for sure. That's Mia playing the piano. Now, A very special moment occurred when Stefan called up to the stage the two youngest musicians in the audience, local residents Mia Collingham and Satsuki Kimura. You don't see kids at events like this that often playing live music. If you're playing in clubs or show concerts and stuff, so you see a couple of kids. And and I play in a church downtown Detroit every Sunday morning. Kids will show up during the service and play with me. And so I thought, well, maybe these kids would enjoy that. What I love to find out, you, you could see how immediately, with no discussion at all, they got the idea of the rhythm, and I gave them a rule of black keys, so they started creating. Now, if we had a chance to do it for five minutes. I would get them to loosen up and they would be more percussive, more uh, uh, syncopated, it would be much more interesting even musically for them and for everybody listening. So it, it, it's a, a quick sort of litmus test, if you will, to get them rolling, getting them involved in music without talking about it. Forget talking about it. We can, we can study it for a year and then play, or we can play right now. Reporting for The Splash, this is Lawrence Nyland. To know more on this story, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash music at Maine. And now it's time for the Civic Center TV event update. We provide you with upcoming events around greater West Bloomfield. And for more events coming up, visit civiccentertv.com slash events. Let your kids eat up and meet up this summer Monday through Friday at Roosevelt Elementary. Free nutritious meals are provided to children up to the age of 18. Breakfast is served from 8.45 to 9.45 a.m. Lunch is served from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. This free food is available to any children, and you don't need to be a resident to stop by. Dispose of prescription drugs with Operation Medicine Cabinet, happening year-round in West Bloomfield, Kego Harbor, and Orchard Lake. and takes place at the police departments of the three communities. Disposing of drugs is completely anonymous. Open 24-7 in West Bloomfield, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. in Kego Harbor, and Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. in Orchard Lake. For more information, visit oakgov.com or call your local police. The finale we've all been waiting for is here, and no, it is not the end of the Affinity Saga, but the summer reading finale at the West Bloomfield Public Library. There will be dancing, airbrush tattoos, a petting zoo, Legos, and also get a chance to see the Reading Challenge Project Fair. It's free to attend and no registration is required. For additional information, visit westbloomfieldlibrary.org.
Attention all cool kids, it's time to max out your swag levels by attending the DIY school supplies class at the public library. Here you can make some extra lit school supplies like pencil toppers, bookmarks, and pencil cases. No registration or cost to attend and visit westbloomfieldlibrary.org for info. Oakland County Clerk's Office is heading to West Bloomfield and during this visit on August 27th, you can get a variety of county level tasks completed without having to drive out to the Oakland County office. You can get certificates for birth, death, marriage, as well as obtain property documents and also register to vote. This will be going on from 10 to 11.30 a.m. And for a full list of information on what can be done, go to oakgov.com. Come to Henry's Market on Main. This market hosts a variety of fresh, locally grown produce, as well as baked goods, salsa, pesto, and many other delicious products, including tree samples. Learn from expert chefs how to prepare a meal with the ingredients grown from Henry Ford's very own greenhouse. The market is open Wednesdays from 9 to 5 and is free and open to the public. For more information, go to henryford.com. And that's this week's highlights. You can find more events online at civiccentertv.com slash events and see everything going on in the greater West Bloomfield area. We're going to take a short break, but when we return, I'll sit down with the founder of Brew, Max Fieber. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Civic Center TV is your home for everything greater West Bloomfield. Here you can tune into community programming such as our weekly news magazine show, The Splash, as well as coverage of local events and meetings in Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, and West Bloomfield. You can also watch all of your local programming online anytime at civiccentertv.com. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm joined this week by Max Fieber, founder of Brew. And Max, I have to say, welcome. And this is one of my favorite things, coffee. Oh. So you are the perfect guest. Thanks, Brooke. I'm so <laughs> excited to be here. So you grew up in West Bloomfield. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell me about how this came to be. So when I was 15, I just fell in love with coffee. And... You know, not very typical of a 15-year-old, but I really started to like it. And because I liked it so much, I wanted to learn everything about it. So I tried roasting it at home. I tried brewing it all these different ways. And through this process of learning everything, I found cold brew coffee. Mm -hmm. And it promised to be a lot smoother, sweeter, easier on your stomach. You know, it was recommended by a ton of people. And so I said, I want to try it. Mm -hmm. And what I did is I took a mason jar, and I added ground coffee and cold water to the jar, put it in my fridge for 24 hours, because that's what everything online said to do. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to filter it. And I used like a cheesecloth and a paper towel, and I slowly strained it through. It made this huge mess. It went everywhere. And I said there has to be a better way to do this. So I started coming up with ideas and prototyping, and I eventually invented a double-sided mason jar lid that you put onto the jar, you put an empty jar on the top, and then you flip it. So the coffee will drip from the top of the jar through the filter into the bottom jar, giving you the drinkable cold brew coffee. And how's it taste? It's delicious. I mean, we're drinking it now. <laughs> <Yes>. It's great. <laughs> So, yes, yeah, so it's very good. So, okay, so you were recently on a national stage with Shark Tank. Yeah, I was. So, it was unbelievable. Okay, so tell me about that and where Brew is now. So, um, you know, after the, a few years of running Brew, the, the opportunity to be on Shark Tank presented itself, and I ended up on Shark Tank, and I got to deal with Mark Cuban, which mm -hmm. was unbelievable, and it was the coolest experience ever. And so now I'm working with Mark on growing Brew and finding new ways to you know, launch new products and get more customers and make our customers that we already have happier and just in continue to increase the size of the company and the size of the brand. So how many customers do you have? We have a lot. We have customers in all 50 states and a couple other countries, too. So it's really cool. Um, you know, we're slowly starting to see customers everywhere and more and more right. of them popping up. Okay, so I'm dying to see this, so okay. show me the demonstration. So I'll show you how it works. Okay. So here's the box. comes with this box. And you designed the logo. I did. That's so awesome. So as a high school student, when I was starting it, you know, I was 15 when I invented the product. Right. You know, I'll show it. I needed a logo, and I needed packaging, and I couldn't afford a designer, and I mm -hmm. couldn't send it to somebody. So my only option was to teach myself graphic design. Wow. So I taught myself how to do that, taught myself how to make a box. Um, so you pretty much have done it all. I'm pretty much done it all. So here's the kit. This is what you get. Okay. Um, and it'll look pretty familiar to you. We can put this box to the side. Okay, here. So it'll look pretty familiar to you if you've ever had a mason jar in your house. So this is just a standard ball mason jar. Um, you know, just a 32-ounce wide-mouth mason jar. Nothing special about it. 
And then here's the trick. This okay. is what makes you know brew special. This is the brew filter. So basically, you put this into the mason jar when there's coffee in it. Mm -hmm. and you put the empty one on the top and you flip it. So here, let me just. Oh yeah, just walk show me. It. So here's what we'll do. These these are big mason jars. They're big. I, yeah, these they're are big. bigger than normal, right? And they make a lot of coffee. No, these are pretty standard. Are these, they? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm just thinking about when, no, no. I'm just thinking about when my uh, grandma used to can stuff, oh, and it seemed like the little smaller ones. ones right. right. There's a lot of different sizes now, right. which but is cool. But this is perfect for coffee. I love it. So you take a jar like this, just a standard quart mason jar. You add ground coffee to the bottom, and then you fill it all the way to the top with water. You stick a cup, you know, put a regular lid on it. Stick it in the fridge for 24 hours, and then you take it out in the morning. Okay. Then what I was saying is what people have used used to do is they would take a cheesecloth over the top, yeah, and big pour mess. it, made a mess. Yes. So I invented this brew filter, and so there's a, a it's basically a double sided mason jar lid, and there's a filter in the middle. You can see. So you put it onto the jar, just like that. Yeah. So imagine a sludgy coffee mixture in here. Right. You put an empty jar on the top, and then you flip it, and so like an hourglass, the coffee filters through this jar, lid okay. into the bottom jar. How long does that take? The filtering just takes a minute or oh, two. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, so, so it's, it's not a long process at not all. Not at all. So okay. it sits for 24 hours and then it filters right away. So you don't have to sit there and be, I need my coffee, I need my coffee. Exactly. Quick, quick. So about a minute? Yeah, not even. Okay. I mean, I take it out of the fridge first thing in the morning, I filter it and pour myself a cup. It doesn't even feel like it's taking any time. Okay, so then how do you transfer everything? So is that a straw or is that just a transfer? That is a straw. So the straw is for airflow. So this is something I learned on freshman year physics, right? Okay. So in high school. So if you had no straw, the top of the straw would be full of air. Okay. And there'd be air at the bottom. And because the filter is so fine, there's no way for like air to bubble up through it. So there's a vacuum that was made. That's what my physics teacher told me. And the coffee wouldn't come through. So we needed to find a way to get air from here to here. So I you know, was sitting in this room of all these people giving me ideas for like these really elaborate systems. Mm -hmm. And while we were talking, I just took a bendy straw and stuck it on and said, hey, this will work. And really? So, exactly. And that's how it happened. That's how it happened. So now there's a straw in it, which helps it with the airflow for the coffee. So I think you are probably an uh, entrepreneur. You are the whole definition of entrepreneur, I think. Oh, thank you. Yes. So how old are you now, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 20. I just turned 20 in June. Okay, so this has been a five-year process. Yeah. I mean, it's been... Five years of slowly figuring out how to make a product, how to launch a business, you know, trying to get my footing with everything. And right. now we're really starting to grow like a normal company. Okay, so where do you want to take it from here? I mean, where's it going? Oh, my gosh. So we want to launch new products. We think it'd be amazing for us to start diversifying our product line with things that make all cold brew coffee taste better. Like, you know, we might have some flavored coffee packets in the future, you know, okay. ever, anything that might help enhance this product. And we want to just keep selling more of these. We're going to do different colors. Like, so is it this? So when somebody orders from Brew, is this what they're getting? Yes. So we sell in two different ways. We sell okay. with the two jars in mm -hmm. this big kit. We also sell without the jars, just this filter piece. Oh. So this, you know, will sell by itself for twelve ninety nine, and this kit will sell for twenty nine ninety nine. Okay, but for twenty nine ninety nine, you get you get the you jars, get the, the jars. filter, and occasionally a bag of coffee. I was going to say, what about coffee? So we also have our own brand of coffee. Okay. We designed it specially to taste delicious in cold water. And so that's what we sell that on our website as well. Okay. So um, $29.99, how do people find find out how to get this? So we're for sale on brew.net. It's B-R-U-W.net. Yes. Show the box again. Just show to... the box again. All right, actually. And I've got this handy little baseball hat as well. <laughs> I know. I brought her a little hat. I thought it'd be nice. So, so this is how you spell it. And... This is where you get it, and again, twenty nine ninety nine for the whole kit. Yes, exactly. Coffee not included. Coffee not included. If you email us asking for a discount, saying you saw us in the splash, sometimes we'll give you a discount. Really? So definitely send us an email. So maybe I'll get a discount. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. And Thank something you. really cool we do is for all of our customers that buy, actually, we send them out my personal cell phone number. Because I said, like, you know, there's no reason they should have to go through all this technical steps to get help. They can just call me or text me or FaceTime me or whatever they want. So, really? Exactly. So, so you're completely accessible. Completely accessible. If you buy one, you automatically get an email with my phone number in it that okay. tells you you can, you know, call me for anything. Right. Okay. So um, you are heading to San Francisco. I am. Okay. So, so I'm a student at Babson College, mm -hmm. and they're, you know, they offer a semester abroad or semester away in San Francisco, so I'm participating in the program, traveling there for a semester. Okay. And, of course, Brew will be going with you? Brew will be going with me. Okay. So, I mean, the manufacturing obviously can't move. That's all done in the United States, most mm -hmm. of it in Michigan, but okay. I'm going to be in San Francisco working on it. Okay. But if somebody has a question, they can still text you text or email me, you. Text me, call me, email me, however you want to get in touch. Okay. Well, you know what? It has been a pleasure. Thank you Cheers. so much. Thank you. Thank you. 
And once again, we've been joined by Max Fieber, founder of Brew. And on this week's episode of A Minute with Nature, we learn about some of Michigan's state symbols. Hello and welcome to Minute with Nature. I'm your host, Lauren Azuri, the park naturalist for West Bloomfield Parks. And today we're here inside our nature room talking about the state symbols of Michigan. Lots of state symbols were established early in the 1900s, and one of those was our state bird, the robin. It's a very common bird here in the state of Michigan and can be easily seen and watched. They're a fun bird to watch because they do eat lots of worms, and they can eat up to 14 feet of worms in a day. That's a lot of worms for one little bird. Another way to figure out where robins are at, if you want to see them or view them, you can look for their nest in the early spring. Robin nests are pretty abundant here in our area. Different birds use different materials to build their nest. The robin uses a mud base. So you'll notice a nest that has this thick mud and then lots of uh, grasses on the inside and surrounding it on the outside. Sometimes they'll even use um, string and yarn and things from other people. This one even has like a little trash bag um, put into it as well as some birch bark. But for the most part, it's um, a mud base with the grasses put on the inside. Also, those beautiful blue eggs that they lay in there in the early spring is an identifier as well. The state reptile of Michigan is the painted turtle. The painted turtle became our state reptile in 1995 when a fifth grade class realized we didn't have one. They passed a bill for the painted turtle to become our state turtle. They're an aquatic turtle, can be found mostly by uh, water and usually sunning themselves on logs. The reason they get their name painted turtle is because they have this beautiful shell. This is the shell from a painted turtle. You can notice along the edges there's a lot of detail and um, patterning that's on their shell and that's a big identifier for the painted turtle. The state tree of Michigan is our white pine tree. The white pine tree is a great symbol for Michigan. It identifies one of the main industries that we were known for years ago, and that's the Michigan lumber industry. To identify a white pine tree versus other pine trees we might have here like the red pine, you pluck a little bundle of needles off the tree and it will have five needles in one bundle. And that also stands for W-H-I-T-E. So five needles um, it means our white pine tree, which is our state tree. The state game mammal of Michigan is the white-tailed deer. The white-tailed deer became our state game mammal in 1997, and that was um, decided by a fourth grade class. They found out that there was a white-tailed deer in every county in Michigan, and that's why it makes a great symbol to be represented here in Michigan. We have lots of white-tailed deer, and they stay here all season long. So you can see them in the spring, summer, winter, and fall. There are lots of other state symbols of Michigan. We have a state fossil as well as a state wildflower, but we don't have a state insect. We're one of only three states in the whole United States that do not have a state insect. But right now, a resident of uh, Kegel Harbor, someone here in the greater West Bloomfield area, is um, trying to get a bill passed for the monarch butterfly to become our state insect. So stay tuned, because hopefully soon, Michigan will have a new state insect. And that's your Minute with Nature. For more episodes of Minute with Nature, visit civiccentertv.com slash MWN. And now it's time for our final segment, Person of the Week, where we celebrate the people in the community who are inspiring and providing toward others. And this week's recipient is Detective Catherine Roshert. Detective Roshert has been a part of the West Bloomfield community for many years, being a graduate of West Bloomfield High School. She eventually found her way to the West Bloomfield Police Department, where she dedicates her time to protecting, serving, and improving the community we live in. She regularly participates at various volunteer events, which benefits the community in numerous ways. And Catherine has been a guest on a panel, which informed the parents of West Bloomfield about the dangers of vaping. This dedication to improving the health and safety of the community is why she is our Person of the Week. And if you know someone who's making a positive difference, let us know. Send an email to the splash at civiccentertv.com. We want to congratulate and acknowledge those making a difference in our community. And we appreciate your suggestions. That's it for this week's show. You can watch new episodes Mondays at 5.30 p.m. Civic Center TV on Comcast 15, AT&T 99, and online in HD at civiccentertv.com. And, of course, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and now on Instagram at Civic Center TV. And for all our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Brooke Allen. Thank you for watching The Splash. <music>